Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to Spinistry Live. I am your race host, Kevin Lee. Um, we are definitely in shelter in place mode here, stay at home mode. I'm not sure what all the different terminologies are. Um, things are different out there, no doubt about it. Uh, today we're going to talk about some tools that we're putting together to help uh, club spinistry members uh, better tolerate uh, and deal with some uh, some shelter in place type stuff. Hopefully, um, got some ideas. We've had bunches of ideas of different things we can do as all this craziness around coronavirus, COVID nineteen, whatever else is going on. Um, we were hoping to have pieces in place to help folks out, but uh, everything's been changing so fast. Every idea that we've come up with along the way um, to give people an outlet, um, like get shut down before we're able to, to implement it. Um, this one, hopefully we can give folks, help give folks an outlet and we'll go into that momentarily. Um, uh, First off, thanks to all who uh, who have been getting the new Club Spinistry memberships, renewing their current memberships, even if it's a little bit on the preliminary side. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna thank folks individually. Uh, rest assured, your help is tremendously uh, appreciated, and uh, it is tremendously helpful. Um, we're we don't have any expectations of putting on our traditional spinistry events in, in the foreseeable future. And maybe, uh, maybe I'm being a little pessimistic about that, but, uh, I, I think large gatherings, large groups, uh, even if things get better fairly short term, that's going to be, that's going to be, uh, ways down the road before, stuff like that's allowed again. Doesn't mean we won't find other ways to maybe accomplish that or simulate that or whatever else. And that's part of what we touching on a little bit here for, for our club's ministry members. Um, I just want to assure everyone that uh, your club's ministry membership uh, is definitely appreciated. It is definitely helping us uh, muddle through this. Uh, I know everyone's up against some hardships, uh, but the main thing I want, uh, people to feel confident in we're not looking for charity. Uh, we're pretty confident that we're, we're going to give everyone their money's worth uh, one way or another for their club's ministry memberships uh, going forward. And it might mean we have to get a little creative with some stuff, but uh, we're, we're working with ideas and we're going to go with uh, what conditions allow for. Uh, we'll have some other stuff we'll be talking about that I think folks will be excited about, uh, you know, we're back into uh, some lemons into lemonade mode. But uh, without further ado, oh, one last plug for Club's Ministry. If you are wanting to join or interested in joining, not sure how to get there, just from the top of our Facebook page, the Spinistry Facebook page, uh, there is a button to sign up. If you click on that, it will take you to the Club's Ministry page. Uh, but without further ado, uh, we're going to introduce some, I don't know if virtual racing is really the right way um, to, to position this. I mean, it kind of does give that capability, uh, but it's, it's more about um, we want to give clubs ministry members um, some near to home as possible, gravel-ish safe riding options during shelter in place. So far, our understanding of shelter in place requirements, stay at home requirements, again, whatever nomenclature is appropriate in your county, um, does allow for people to go out and exercise. Obviously, you want to maintain proper social distancing and things like that. Uh, one of the issues that seems to have already come up I'm not completely dialed into it. There's a lot of people out there trying to exercise and a lot of people trying to use the same 
uh, resources to exercise, and it's not uh, completely copacetic to social distancing. My understanding is Fort Worth police is out chasing people off the Trinity Trail in Fort Worth just because there's so many people that are trying to exercise out there that uh, social distancing isn't uh, being able to be pulled off. I don't, again, I think this is kind of one of those things that's on the fly. Who knows if this is a permanent thing or if they're going to, but it, it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of people that aren't at work. There's a lot of people that are needing an outlet. And there's limited resources for safe exercise right now. Um, mountain bike trails in the North Texas area, they're out of commission. Uh, Going to be for a while. Uh, it, it seems natural to me. And I'm not trying to rationalize. I'm not trying to justify here. Everyone needs to follow what they're comfortable being safe about. And I am not encouraging people to hop in their cars and drive three hours to do this. We're, we're going to start with this one route. We're going to try to come up with other routes that are convenient to more different areas. Um, and this route is a 100K route in the Denton area. Uh, so Denton, Argyle, Sanger, North Fort Worth, Keller folks. I'm I'm fine with people driving to Denton to participate in safe exercise because that being in your car itself is social distancing. Uh, and I think a safe route, a safe outlet to ride your bicycle is pretty essential these days. I can't speak for others. Uh, my neighborhood, I rode around it today. Uh, not, not, not people being crazy or anything, but there's just so many cars that are parked along the curbs and it's, I mean, it's not a safe outlet to ride a bicycle by any stretch of the imagination. And the way my neighborhood's positioned, there's no safe way in or out of my neighborhood uh, right now. So realistically for me to safely ride my bike, I have to hop in a vehicle and take the bicycle somewhere to ride it, uh, which I will be doing and I, which, which I will be doing on at least portions of this route uh, to verify a couple things. And uh, we'll go over it. We'll go over it shortly. Uh, so the the idea is going to be, and I'm definitely open to suggestions. We'll zoom out here. Um, I've put together a route that's, and you know, I mentioned Denton, Roanoke, Sanger, Keller, North Fort Worth. It's fairly safe and convenient. Just straight shot up 35, but it's also convenient to Louisville. Little Elm area and things like that. Um, like I said, I don't expect people from Austin to be driving up to do this or anything like that. Um, and I'm not encouraging people to do extra driving to access this. This is just our first route. Uh, we'll come up with others, obviously, in the North Texas area. Um, I, I want to come up with one near McKinney. Uh, Probably the we'll probably put out uh, one of our new Maypro routes that we weren't able to use for International Grand Prix of Gravel for people, you know, South Dallas, South, you know, Mansfield, Arlington, stuff like that. Um, but the focus will be on what's hopefully safe routes, uh, but some with some gravel. The Maypro route will probably have a good bit of gravel, but most of the others will just be just partially gravel. This one is partially gravel itself and I'll walk through it uh, a little bit step by step but club members what they'll be able to do is whenever it fits into the schedule go ride this route uh, you want to ride it with the ride with GPS app on and recording it and you want to do it from this event I'll send this link to club members and then it'll automatically update a leaderboard that we can just keep running so you know just keep track of who does it and what time um, not a thousand percent conf or confidence, not the word, up to speed on how that leaderboard functionality works. So this will probably be a work in progress and we'll, we'll learn some things. Um, my recommendation will be use the Ride with GPS app in conjunction with the event, which will be sent to club spinistry members and record it that way. But also if you have a Wahoo or Garmin or whatever navigation device, definitely record it on that as well. 
preferably your uploads and, uh, you know, upload to Strava and ride with GPS. Preferably you upload those in a public format so people can verify the routes and think, you know, we'll, we'll come up with some sort of recognitions for people that, that uh, have the faster times. And again, well, this is a work in progress. So we currently have the shelter in place route set up from now until June 1st, we'll be adding routes. My understanding is you can do the same route multiple times and it will update your faster times uh, and, and so forth. And uh, hopefully in that time frame, uh, if other routes are convenient to you, you can do those as well. Uh, generally speaking, again, we're not going to be until until safety guidelines are adjusted accordingly. We're not going to be encouraging people to drive across the state or anything like that. We're definitely not encouraging group gatherings. Uh, this is meant for people to ride by themselves or you know maybe with a loved one or something like that. Um, and along those lines, that's that's one of the things we do ask is the route itself is going to be a public route. Anyone can access it and navigate to it. But as far as going, I'm going to send out the the Ride with GPS event link to club members. Uh, please don't. Clubs finish. Remember that doesn't preclude anyone else from riding the route, though. It's the the route's publicly available, so that's not a problem. If somebody's in the area and wants a safe route and is watching this video, doesn't want to be a club finish. Remember, but they want to. They want a. Uh, a safe route. This is up there. It's not verified at the moment, and we'll go over some of those details here shortly. Some of the things I want to look into. Uh, I'm hoping to go out and verify some of these things myself tomorrow. Uh, but if there's other people in the area that are able to get to it sooner, ping me, and uh, and we'll make it so. I probably won't send the email with this link until I verify these sections, but let's go ahead and walk through the route and the concepts behind it and how it's laid out presently. And we'll be extending the same um, guidelines and thought processes to the other routes in the other areas as well. And in addition, I mean, I recognize I'm reaching out to North Texas primarily right now because it's not realistic for me to go to Central Texas or near Houston or anything like that and verify routes myself. If there are people, if there are clubs ministry members in other areas that, uh, you know, are able to verify routes that we, uh, that we put together, uh, maybe cooperatively or something like that, um, uh, you know, we'll definitely, we'll try to get uh, routes verified in other areas as well. So uh, the areas that want routes, don't hesitate to message me. You can leave a comment here on the video or send an email to spinistry at gmail.com. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the layout of this particular route. We're calling it the Denton 100K. Um I, I also want to put together some shorter routes, you know, something like uh, maybe a 20 mile something that's hard to do and get gravel in it and stay somewhat close to the metro areas, though. Uh, but I'll play with it because um, I'm thinking, you know, something that's like a, a 20 mile route or a 19 mile route or something like that, where there's, um, you know, it's it's. Somebody, if somebody beats an hour, it's a pretty big deal sort of thing. Uh, you know, obviously, I mean, I would never be that person, and a lot of us aren't, but it's still cool to see people pull off those 20-mile-an-hour averages and things like that. So we may look into those. This is 100K here. I don't expect to be putting together any 100-milers or anything like that. I think that kind of goes against the grain at the moment of social distancing and uh, being safe out there and not not putting yourself in harm's way. And also along those lines, uh, the route is specifically set up to not include references to convenience stores or amenities or anything like that. I'm not saying you can't go to those, but we're not going to point them out. 
Uh, again, with safe social distancing in mind, the concept is that you should be packing everything you need for your ride on your bicycle. Um, and if, if you're not able to pack everything you need for a 100K route, maybe this isn't the right route for you to try at this time, but we will have shorter ones uh, in the very near future as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just expand to the map primarily and walk you through the process. As you can see, we have a start point that's separated from the end point. There's a couple different reasons for that. Uh, the start point itself is near go to the satellite view. Uh, it's near the UNT athletic facilities. Uh, so there is lots of public parking in the area. So, so the idea is for you just to park where you're allowed, park where you feel safe, and then you can warm up around here and roll down here and catch the route. Now, what I want to point out, and this route could potentially change, I know there's some construction in this area, and I believe this goes around it. I need to confirm that, though, so I'll, I'm going to pedal my bike that way tomorrow and verify that this start segment does work correctly. And if it doesn't, we'll make some adjustment of some sort. Uh, could potentially mean starting at, at the cemetery or something like that. I don't know if there's parking there or not. Um, I believe there's a school in the area, a city park, some other things as well. But we're we're shooting for because there's you know so many different facilities here with so much parking, um, you should be able to find a place here to park, and then slow roll warm up, and then when you catch this turn onto Willow Wood Street, you can hit that rolling and start your time. Also, the finish is kind of meant to be the same way. The finish will be the on ramp to the interstate southbound I-35 frontage road. So uh, the idea isn't for you to be trying to time trial through here and turn back down. You'll just cool down here and return to wherever you parked. So that's the beginning and end concept right there. Uh, what I will be adding will be designations for where the gravel, gravel sections begin and end. Those aren't in here yet, but I will add those probably later today. Uh, this route will be probably 75 or 80% paved, uh, but it should be pretty safe. But I'm going to walk through it just to, just to give folks a heads up of how it does work. Uh, you know, this is just a little neighborhood loop here. You catch Bonnie Bray. Um, Traditionally, a kind of a rough pavement ride with some a uh, little bit of swoopy to it, particularly in this Hickory Creek area. A good little climb about mile three here. And then at mile four, you'll catch your first unpaved section. There's some rough pavement before then, but your first true unpaved section will be mile four. This will be a little short section here where you catch going out and coming back in. Those of you using Garmin navigation, please pay attention to this on the front end. I know Garmin sometimes get con gets confused uh, if you double back on the same segment. Please know your route ahead of time accordingly or set your Garmin settings appropriately or get a Wahoo. That is not a paid endorsement. Um, this is mostly unpaved through here. This is, a, this is a nice little unpaved section here. It is being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's additional pavement here now. Uh, right here is a railroad crossing. I think, uh, I think we crossed the railroad tracks just these two times, uh, here and back here. So yes, you do, do run the risk of being slowed and your time being impacted by a railroad crossing. Uh, keep that in mind. This is a stretch of 377. 
Let's see, it's from mile 7.4. to 8.8, .8, so roughly a mile and a half. There is a nice shoulder there. Show it here. But it is a high-speed road. I have ridden 377 through this section many, many, many times over the years. Um, I mean, never like to ride high-speed pavement, but um, this isn't bad. There is a there is a traffic light here, which will impact your time. We do not want people running red lights, uh, and Argyle Police, I'm certain, would not appreciate that as well. So do observe the uh, traffic guidelines of the great st state of Texas. Um, Crawford Road here. Nice long stretch. Catch a little bit of dirt here at mile 13 to 14. Here's an interesting little double back section here. Uh, let's zoom in on this. If you happen to do this when it's muddy, this isn't going to work really well. But look. This is completely rideable. I ride it all the time. You can pedal up this, catch the shoulder, and loop back in front of just an animal hospital and down this road. If it does happen to be muddy, you can take the paved section all the way and then back up this way as well. Uh, so this is some pretty rough double track through here. Uh, you will want to gear down before catching that climb. And again, you probably don't want to do that when it's muddy. Uh, this has always been a pretty rough pavement section here. Uh, not unpaved, but very comparable to unpaved. This is a fun gravel section here from mile 19 to 21. Uh, there's a big... Uh, relay station for the gas fields in here. You can't miss it, but it's it's still a really neat dirt road section there. Pavement here, and then we catch our Doosan slash County Line Road rollers. This is one of the best gravel sections in the whole area. I think about mile 30, it goes back to pavement maybe a little bit before then. Yeah, actually before the 40, 10, about mile 29 and a half, it goes back to pavement. Go up to 380 for the shoulder for a short stretch. Another nice dirt road through here. Uh, for reference purposes, there is a convenience store up here, but not directly on the route. So if you're about the midpoint and you just got to have something. There is a convenience store there. And this is going to be this is going to be all paved basically from mile 34. You'll catch a cool single lane uh, arch bridge under the railroad tracks here. So you do go under the railroad tracks. You will not be impeded if there's a train crossing there. And it's a pretty cool bridge. Swing back down here. This is a, there's a low water crossing at this creek. This is all paved, but it's, it's a, it's a nice little country road. Again, this is a, this is a pretty safe route. Uh, you still want to be comfortable riding in traffic when it's necessary, but the vast majority of this route is going to be pretty desolate country roads. And again, maybe 20% gravelish, 25%. If we're, no, it won't be 25%. 20%ish gravel. Uh, H. Lively Road climb here. Come back. Catch uh, Robson Ranch Road. Uh, this this is paved through here, but it's just this is a classic. If you get if you if you got arrow bars, this is when you get them, and you just push it all the way to here. You have a good climb at this point. 
And uh, actually, I need to make an adjustment here. It's, it looks like it has it going through the church parking lot, but we actually need to go down to this road here. So I'll make that adjustment shortly. And you make this left off the neighborhood road, and it looks like you're just going into a private road, but it's it's not. Uh, kind of goes between a uh, wooden fence, a couple wooden fences. It's not a gate, but it kind of looks like it's gated. And uh, you catch a dirt road here, and follow this, and then we're going to hang a left. You'll go over the interstate. Uh, this is a very classic. Uh, segment that's been on Strava for quite a while that the people in this area, it's called gravel bomb. So you have a, if you have a south tailwind, you've got a nice little downhill end of this and you're just, and it's, it's dirt roads, dirt road through here. And it's called, it's called gravel bomb. And uh, it's kind of, it's just kind of a classic little Strava segment. Uh, then uh, you'll cross the farm to market road here. And we are pavement the rest of the way. This this is a, even though it's paved, this is still a kind of fun little windy hilly segment through here. Go up by the airport, past the shooting range, and you go by Peterbilt Manufacturing. And again, the end point for the segment will be at the frontage road turn off there. And then you'll just cool down through here and then back to wherever you parked. So that's the planned layout. Uh, I'll tweak the change here. I'll put some segment markers on there for where, where the gravel starts and ends. Uh, I'll try to verify this opening segment at least. That let me know. And uh, we'll make this available to club spinistry members probably starting tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening again just want to give folks an idea of some of the things we're going to work on for club members going forward we appreciate your help and support uh, we want to do what we can to help and support everyone as well if there are other ideas out there we are all ears um because uh, this is all new territory for all of us I, I truly believe. Uh, so we want to we want to help people uh, be healthy, stay healthy, and take care of themselves and their loved ones, um, and uh, you know, stay safe. Because uh, we definitely miss you guys. Wish you, wish we, we could all get together. Uh, we'll do what we can in the meantime, and somewhere down the road, we'll all meet up again. Again, comments, suggestions other places you would like to see some routes, uh, feel free to comment on this on this video or send an email to spinistry at gmail.com. Go ahead and sign off now if it lets me. Stop.